But Watford's profits, combined with the absence of Fulham's heavy spending, means that championship losses have improved. But with the other 23 teams still in the red, the division overall still lost an eye-watering 10 million. I quite like if, if in this circumstances when everyone goes crazy. As we head into the playoffs to decide the final team promoted to the Premier League, let's dive into the financial state of the Championship. We'll delve into the numbers of each team covering five key categories. Revenue, operating profit, wages per point, cash from operations and transfer fees, and funding. So just how sustainable is life in England's second tier? Let's find out. Before diving into this year's figures, let's recap what happened the previous season. Total revenues for all 24 championship clubs reached 676 million. When broken down by team, it's no surprise that Fulham, Sheffield United and West Brom topped the charts having been relegated the season before and having the largest parachute payments. Preston, on the other hand, made the least at under 14 million, just 19% of what Fulham generated. To flag Derby didn't produce accounts last year and Reading are yet to submit this year's, so we replicated the financials of the relevant year. There's already a clear divide between teams benefiting from parachute payment support and those without. Next, we swap out the teams that moved in and out of the division. So how does 2023 compare? Norwich, Watford and Burnley, freshly relegated from the Prem, topped the charts with parachutes firmly intact. Huddersfield and West Brom's parachutes tapered, whilst Cardiff and Bristol made step changes in revenue growth. In conclusion, Norwich topped the charts at 76 million, whilst Preston remained at the bottom of the revenue table. Combining these figures, championship revenues grew to 753 million, an 11% increase. So there's relief, there's, there's pride, and of course there's elation. And Next, operating profit. Despite generating over 650 million in revenues in 2022, the 24 teams collectively incurred staggering losses of over 425 million, a 63% negative operating margin. The three promoted teams were able to withstand much heavier losses than the rest of the division. Fulham, despite generating the most revenue, incurred the heaviest loss at 57 million. Peterborough United, although relegated, were the only team to generate any profit in the year. In this analysis, we've excluded profits gained from owners writing off loans at Stoke City and Hull City. Once again, let's map these out and switch out relegated and promoted teams. So how did 2023 get on? Burnley continued the trend of gambling on an instant return to the Premier League with the heaviest loss of the year, but far less than Fulham the year before. Watford, on the other hand, made over 30 million in profit due to a string of player sales following relegation. Sheffield United and Luton saw the bottom line drop as a result of achieving the Premier League dream and the player bonuses that come along with it. Again, other than Watford, all teams made losses. But Watford's profits, combined with the absence of Fulham's heavy spending, means that championship losses have improved. But with the other 23 teams still in the red, the division overall still lost an eye-watering 289 million. I quite like if, if in this circumstances when everyone goes crazy and... Next up, wages per point. In 2022, championship club staff costs totaled 715 million, accounting for 106% of revenue. But how do these costs translate into points on the pitch? Blackpool were best in class at 200,000 wages per point. Conversely, Fulham bet big. Their 90 points cost a staggering £1 million each in wages. Again, let's map these out and swap out the teams exiting and entering. What did returns look like in 2023? Rotherham replaced Blackpool at the top. They picked up 50 points at £200,000 apiece. Coventry delivered the second best wage performance and were just a penalty shootout away from making top flight. At the other end, Norwich were the priciest, 62 points costing over 900,000 apiece in staff costs. And Luton were the pick of the promoted teams, achieving the Premier League dream at 340,000 a point. Adding up all the wage bills means 2023 saw staff costs also improved to 700 million, once again the absence of bigger spenders such as Fulham. 
it's always always difficult. But um... but what about cash flows? As always, we look at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. In 2022, a net 330 million cash exited the championship. That's over 50 million more than we saw in the Premier League we looked at last week. West Brom were one of the few sides to bring in cash, but unsurprisingly Fulham were the biggest spenders, 72 million spent to bounce back to the top flight. To flag, a few teams such as Middlesbrough, Luton and Coventry don't provide a cash flow statement, so these have been estimated. Cash-wise, the pack appears to have tightened up, with no clubs spending more than 30 million in the year. Luton won the day overall as the only team to bring in cash, as well as the championship playoff trophy. Cardiff spent the most in the year, 22 million. Adding this up, it's another improvement. Total cash spent this year is 268 million. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Finally, cash funding. Owners of championship clubs sourced 333 million in 2022. Fulham contributed 117 million, whereas Huddersfield were the only team to take money out, paying down 3 million of loans. But what about 2023? Burnley injected the most with 36 million. We can see once again the pack has tightened in the absence of more free spending players the year before. On average though, championship teams had to pump in 11 million each, meaning total funding remained similar at 324 million. But with Burnley, Sheffield United and Luton all returning to the championship, will the financial realities of life in the championship really set teams up for success in the Premier League? Only time will tell.